Easter, everyone, and welcome back to ASEAN News. Indonesian ambassador will discuss with the Timorese government to extend the validity of the passport. The Indonesian ambassador to Timor-Leste, Okto Dorinus Manik, said he will discuss with the Timorese government over the Timorese government decision through the council minister in which approves the decree law from the justice minister in order to extend the validity period of Timor-Leste's electronic passport. We will talk with the Timor Leste's government, as indeed there is an international rule about the passport issue, and it still requires cooperation both countries. Earlier before, there has been concern raised among the public as well as the member of the national parliament regarding the lack of passports available, especially for Timorese workers who had been selected to work overseas. The actual remain general passport booklets available at the General Directorate of Notary Registration Service, Ministry of Justice, around 400, where the priority at the moment were given to urgent or any emergency matters to be allowed overseas trip. Timorese Cardinal says Christ manifests his humbleness to everyone on Monday, Thursday. Duke Armour, the Timorese Cardinal, said that the Holy Thursday is a time where Jesus Christ manifests his humbleness to humanity by sitting on the same table with the disciples as well as washing their feet. The statement was done by the Timorese Cardinal while presiding the Holy Thursday Mass at the Diles Cathedral. On Holy Thursday, we were asked to pay attention to how Jesus washes the Apostles' feet as Jesus demonstrates his humbleness as an extraordinary gesture, removing his cloak and holding the towel and in his low profile, his bent on his knees and to show that he is not afraid to come in contact with us, the human, whom full of misery and sin. The Karma also appeals to all the Timorese Catholics to follow Jesus' acts, especially on what he had done on Holy Thursday, and to apply it on our daily lives. As the Dili Archbishop and the Timorese Cardinal, Dukarma also urged everyone to express solidarity to those whom in need. Easter celebration can be able to inspire Catholics to elect leaders who know how to serve, says Cardinal Dukarmo of Timor-Leste. During the Easter Vigil celebration at the Dilis Cathedral, the Timorese Cardinal Virgilio Ducarmo said the Easter celebration can inspire Timorese Catholics to elect new leaders who are caring to their people and know how to serve people. The Easter can be able to inspire people if we look closely and for us to celebrate the Easter with a mind to prioritize Jesus as the main center. And Jesus inspires us to vision him as God, God who had shown his only son to become our true leader. And as a true leader, he must care to his own people, forget his own self, and place the common interest higher. And this has been shown by a leader on this Easter. And wishfully this Easter can inspire all the devotees to elect a leader who knows how to serve the people, the one whom we had familiar with, those leaders who truly love their people and wants the best for them. <laughs> Earlier before, Jose Ramos Horta, the Timorese President of Republic, has decreed the parliamentary election will be held on May 21, 2023. Filipino Catholics devotees self-flagellate for land. Catholic devotees in the Philippines performed self-flagellations to commemorate the Passion of Jesus Christ. Devotees walked barefoot for hours under sweltering heat while repeatedly striking their backs with bamboo wipes. This is our vow every Holy Week to strengthen our faith to our Lord and to repentance of our sins. Many Filipino devotees perform religious penance during the week leading up to the Easter Sunday as a form of worship and supplication. Some believe that the practice of self-flagellation can clean sins, cure illness, and even grant wishes. The Catholic Church disapproves of these self-punishments as misinterpretations of faith, as prayers and sincere repentance are enough to commemorate the Lenten observance. Despite opposition from the Church, such practices still continue across predominantly Catholic Philippines. More than 80% of the population of over 100 million is Catholic. Crucifixion rights return to the Philippines after pandemic hiatus. A Filipino Catholic devotee was nailed to a cross for a reenactment of Jesus Christ's crucifixion in observance of Good Friday in the central province of Pampanga. Crucifixion rites were technically banned throughout the Philippines since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, but finally resumed this year.
Uh, we have to be uh, mindful and uh, respectful of the local um, heritage that we have, um, especially in Barangay San Pedro Couture. They've been doing it since 1955. And um, similarly for the other traditions, they've been there since the 1960s. No, So it's not that uh, we are encouraging this, but we're here to intervene and ensure the um, health, safety, and security of the participants and respect the local traditions of the people of San Fernando. According to the local government, local devotees have been practicing crucifixion rites since 1955. During the Lenten season, many devotees in the Philippines practice their penance with long-standing traditions such as crucifixion, self-flagellation, fasting, and pilgrimage to churches. The crucifixion rituals are held during Holy Week and eight-day celebrations starting from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday. Over 80% of the Philippines' 94 million population practices the Catholic religion, making it the only non-Asian country with predominantly Catholic beliefs. Thailand Prime Minister Paiton Tarn Shinawatra filed candidacy for upcoming election. Thailand's Prime Minister Prayu Chan Ocha and key candidate of the Pew Thai Party, Pai Ton Thang Shinawatra, filed their candidacy for the upcoming general election. Prayut arrived at the Bangkok City Hall under tight security and spoke to reporters briefly, telling people to have faith in his United Thai Nation Party. Members of 49 political parties then witnessed a draw of election numbers to represent their respective parties. The May 14 general election will be another fierce battle between parties aligned with the military-backed establishment led by 69-year-old Prayut and the billionaire Shinawatra family-backed Pew Thai party, this time led by Pai Ton Trang, the 36-year-old daughter and niece of the two ex-premiers. Parties will view for parliamentary seats on May 14, and newly elected members of the parliament and the appointed senate are expected to decide on the prime minister by the end of July. China says open to dialogue with Malaysia on South China Sea. Chinese Foreign Minister said China would like to work with Malaysia to handle differences in the South China Sea through dialogue and consultation. Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim said that he had told the Chinese government that an exploration project by state energy firms Petronas in the South China Sea was within Malaysian waters in a reference to an overlapping claim in the area by Beijing. China firmly safeguards our legitimate rights and interests in the South China Sea. In the meantime, we are willing to work with the Malaysian side to continue to properly address the differences between the two countries in the sea through dialogue and consultation. China claims its territory in the South China Sea via a nine-dash line on its maps, which cuts into the exclusive economic zones of Vietnam, the Philippines, Malaysia, Brunei, and Indonesia. Thank you everyone, enjoy your weekdays ahead, we'll see you soon.